may not be suitable for all audiences. I'm done being used. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Scholars, welcome back again to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I am a professional artist and master educator who attempts to provide the best in our historical content. If you like the content, don't be a ding-dong. Make sure you hit all the buttons and ring the bells and all of that fun stuff so you can stay informed on the content that we've got developing. Looks just like you. So today, as you know, because you clicked on the video, I want to talk about a contemporary artist that has come up in conversation multiple times, and finally, I've done the right thing in making a full video on Deborah Butterfield, one of the great contemporary art sculptors, um, and so let's just jump right in and have that conversation. A California girl from San Diego, California, Deborah Butterfield would become known as one of the great contemporary sculptors as she creates these marvelous works of horses constructed from found objects like wood, metal, and other sorts of found materials. We have seen her time and time again in galleries and settings, and so really focusing our attention on her work, we kind of need to start at the beginning. She first became interested in sculpture with creations of the female form. Obviously, she would transition into the work that focused on horses, and this now very much dominates her work subject matter. She studied at the University of California, Davis, and went on to become an educator at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and Montana State University throughout the 70s and 80s. Simultaneously with her work as an educator, there was becoming an increased demand for her work in gallery spaces and collections around the world. She began this work predominantly with sticks and wood and things like that, beginning in the 1970s, and then in the 1980s she would incorporate scrap metal and steel into her works. He doesn't eat, he's a robot! So why does Deborah Butterfield create horses? The horses started as a metaphorical self-portrait, and ultimately, she was intending to create a feminist sort of statement with these works. But subject matter and communicative things aside, how does she begin the work on these projects? Flailing around is an important part of it, and faking it, you know, you're like, I don't know, I'm just going to start. Or even if you just sweep your floor, it's enough to get you kind of warmed up and in your studio. and something will happen and basically something has to happen so that you can respond to it and I think that so much of making art is just the practice of it. I can tell you I don't have money but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Over time, the wires would sag, the wood would warp, things like that would happen, gravity would happen, and so she was constantly in a state of repairing them. So, casting these in bronze became a very natural next step in her work. The wooden pieces are all transformed into bronze these days. I used to leave them in wood, but, you know, the wire would stretch and they would sag, or the bugs would eat them, or the cat would knock them off the piano, and... I was tired of trying to repair work that looked like roadkill, you know, kind of stretched and distorted. And so the bronze are a way for me to have my work and let it go. So what in her mind makes art different? I think the one thing about art is that it helps you to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. When you see a movie or you read a book, you end up identifying with a person that's so different than you that you can't imagine what it would be like to be them, but you get a glimpse of what it might be like to be someone else. And I think even in abstract work, 
there's this space in it that allows you to come in and enter that, like the quiet. And that's how I feel about my work. I hope that uh, people will almost crawl inside and, and like look out through the horse, that you experience it internally, but not as an observer, but that you become part of that energy. And I think developing empathy is the one thing that can justify making art, that you try to encourage people to feel things in a non-linear way, in a different way. No, I'm supposed to help you and make you happy and powerful. Since 1986, Deborah Butterfield and her fellow artist and husband, John Buck, have split their time between their summers in Montana and their winters in Hawaii. A life that started with the creation of sculptures to communicate ideas, to put herself out there. Something that we all as artists do and something that we as art appreciators can maybe see and understand and appreciate a little bit more. The artist that's putting themselves out there to share their vision, to share their ideas and all of those sorts of things that artists do in galleries and museums and spaces all around the world. Friends, I hope you enjoy that content as much as I enjoy being able to bring it to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'm gonna have a horsey!